Housed within St Nicholas Parish Church is a unique artefact of national importance, which was made and painted locally some 400 years ago, specially for its town of Ulster. Each door has two painted text on its outer face and two brightly coloured paintings on the inner face. A list of benefactors from 1562 to 1904 is on parchment in the centre panel. The board, which has now been proved to have been made in 1632, dates from when church wall paintings and artefacts are likely to have been adorned in bright colours. The four painted panels on the interior of the doors depict not saints, but ordinary people engaged in charitable acts to benefit small businesses, the disabled, a school and prisoners. The scene in a schoolroom was probably even painted from experience. St Nicholas Parish Church is located at the very centre of Ulster, a busy Midlands town with a population of around 10,000 and a rich history since Roman times. The town centre has many timber framed and Georgian buildings. The board can just be seen to the left of this picture, fixed to the north wall of St Nicholas' beautiful Palladian style nave designed by the acclaimed Francis Smith of Warwick. During the recent church restoration, the board was removed to a painting conservator's studio, providing the opportunity to study, clean and repair it before its return to the church. The conservator's initial examination has redetermined its date of construction and begun to explore the historical context of the board. Research into the images and the materials and techniques used will provide a greater understanding of it. The strategy of conservation had been determined between various experts, diocesan and parish representatives, for which task quotations totaled just over £30,000. The next few slides describe the board in greater detail. The board with its doors closed. Each door has text painted on its outer faces. The three panel design follows pre-Reformation church practice of having mercy boards expressing the way of life to avoid the doom of hell, frequently depicted in a large painting over the chancel arch. The texts on the outer faces are painted black onto the wood, with a background of white added after, now discoloured by the ageing varnish. Behold, within this table are the names with the memorable acts of those who have most liberally extended their bounty to help the tradesmen and relieve the poor and aged people dwelling within the town and parish of Ulster. This 400-year-old message with its biblical text follow is displayed for the people of Ulster. It seems as appropriate today as it did when written. Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to the needy for the poor shall never cease out of the land. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Infrared examination of the 1683 date has revealed 1632 underneath. Opening up the board, four most interesting pictures are revealed on the inside of the doors. Blessed is 
he that considereth the poor and needy. The interior of the left door upper panel shows donors with a barber, a carpenter and a butcher, representatives of local trades. The costume figures are thought to be copied from printed material available at the time. This enhanced slide was specially produced by Nick Drew Design. It was displayed at an exhibition entitled Battle Scarred in 2016 at the Newark Civil War Centre. The exhibition explained the evolution of military surgery, medicine and welfare. It might even be a very early depiction of a paraplegic. To do good and to communicate, forget not. The interior of the right door upper panel shows a schoolroom. Ulster's Newport School was founded in 1600. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul. The interior of the right door lower panel showing well-wishers passing food to prisoners. And now some brief notes about the painting and construction of the frame. The panels were probably painted after assembly and thought to be in the same hand as the writing. Some parts of the framework have definitely been overpainted. The conservators are already making some interesting discoveries. The construction is oak, probably of local origin. The back panels have been dated by dendrochronology, tree ring dating, to the first half of the 17th century. The outer polycomb framework has carved top and bottom rails, the doors attached with hand forged hinges and nails. Two sheets of parchment are mounted in the centre frame. The parchment bears a handwritten list of benefactions, all of which appear to be written in the same hand. The latest date on the parchment is 1904, so this element cannot be dated any earlier than that. The left hand parchment has clauses dating from 1562 through to 1769, covering the period from soon after the Reformation, the English Civil Wars and the rebuilding of the nave we use today. The clauses commence with two Fulk Greville gifts of 1560s. Number three is the Walter Newport's gift in 1600 for a school. And number four is Lord Brooke's gift in 1618 toward building of Ulster's Town Hall. The left-hand parchment ends with numbers 24, the founding of Church Street Properties Trust, and 25 and 26, a bequest from the Oaks Wills, dated as 1769. The right-hand parchment continues from 1833, with clause number 27, the Hodgetts bequest to establish the Ulster Almshouses, through to the end with clauses 35 and 36, for the Goulds Gifts bequests of 1904, for poor people over 60 years of age and a second for the upkeep of the church and churchyard. All the charitable bequests listed on the board were addressed for administration by the vicar, the rector, and church wardens, on some of which to this day St Nicholas church officers continue to serve ex officio. During inspection, a filled hole was found in the right-hand door, and with parchment removed, a similar matching repair in the back panel. This test piece, fired at by a period musket, produced similar damage, suggesting it could have been caused during the civil wars when the church was routed by royalist forces. The next three slides explain where the board has been in the church since it was made. From evidence of the tower, external walls, painted rood screen and internal wall dimensions, the pre-1730 church might have looked like this. 
the benefactions or mercy board made in 1632 would probably have been hung in the central nave near the rude screen. From a survey by the architect M. H. Bloxham in 1847, the benefactions board was observed to be in the vestry on the southeast corner of Smith's Church prior to the 1871 changes. Stored within the tower is a frieze of four or possibly five large oak boards with gold painted texts that repeat all the clauses on the parchments up to and including 1733. This suggests that the older board with its bright paintings was not returned into the rebuilt nave until the revival additions and alterations to the church in 1871 when it may have been more acceptable. These four large oak boards, when assembled together in line, would stretch to about six metres or 20 feet, and would, would possibly have been mounted around the three walls of the tower. The previous site of the Benefactions Board, before its move to its present site, was opposite S. E. Dykes Bowers War Memorial, erected in 1951. The War Memorial echoes in similar style the painted frame of the Benefactions Board, hung opposite at that time. The Benefactions Board was probably placed here in 1871, when the tower was opened through to form the west entrance we have today. However, when Glycan's sculpture of Sir Hamilton Seymour was placed there a few years later, it prevented the doors of the board from being fully opened, leading to the move of the board in the 1980s to its present site in the North Isle. For comparison with the Benefactions Board, this slide is of the S. E. Dykes Bowers War Memorial erected on the north wall of the church tower porch in 1951. It shows how this three panel board was designed and painted in similar style to reflect the benefactions board, at that time hung on the opposite tower wall. The various conservation tasks involved included painting conservation, timber repairs and remounting, parchment conservation and infrared reflectography to establish the different layers of paint. The cost of this conservation project is supported by the Church of England Buildings Council, the Arts Scholars Charitable Trust, the Garfield Western Foundation, the Society of Antiquaries of London, Ulster and District Local History Society, Ulster Civic Society, Ulster Town Council, Ulster's Local Trust, and many private donors who between them have contributed about half the cost. We thank you all for the support of this project.